good evening and assalamu alaikum uh, i welcome all the speakers and keynote speaker and mr uh, muhammad akhtar javed honorable former uh, chairperson chair of icom pakistan and uh, board member of icom aspac and he is actually he is the pioneer of this session and he, he started uh, these uh, sessions uh, two years ago and he is continuing and about so far i know about more than 36 countries participated in this process and uh, this is the first session of bangladesh and although this is the uh, first session of national session and I hope within short time we'll arrange for the international session also. And uh, our today's uh, theme is art and Ar architecture of Bangladesh. And uh, Mr. Faisal Latif Choudhury, former Director General uh, of Bangladesh National Museum, and uh, he's also professor of a private university in Bangladesh. And he will speak on uh, as a uh, keynote speaker and uh, Ms. Asma Feddosi of Bangladesh National Museum and Rashidul Alam Pradeep of Bangladesh National Museum, Shukti Padu Haldar of Bangladesh National Museum and Shomitra Kumar Vishash of National Museum of Science and Technology of Bangladesh will deliver their space as a speaker. And um, uh, I hand over the floor to the, our uh, ICOM Bangladesh Secretary, Mr. Muhammad Sirajul Islam. He is also the board member of I, uh, ICOM SBAC. I request him, he, him to contact the session as moderator. And Mr. Sirajul Islam, his floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, chairperson of the session. Uh, today's session uh, is uh, titled as Art and Architecture of Bangladesh, organized by uh, National Virtual Conference on Museums uh, in short form, NBCOM. It is a part of International Virtual Conference on Museum uh, in short form, IVCOM. Uh, it's a network of uh, ICOM Pakistan. Uh, uh, they have expanded this network over uh, 100 uh, countries, and a special thank goes to the pioneer of this uh, of this initiative, uh, Mr. Uh, Mohammad Akhtar Javed, uh, the ex director general of uh, Museum of uh, Pakistan. And today's session is uh, being uh, chaired by uh, Mr. Jahangir Hossein. Uh, he is the chair of IVCOM Bangladesh and is a member of uh, the working group on statutes and rules uh, of ICOM. And he is the former chairperson of ICOM Bangladesh. I am very pleased to inform you that uh, Professor Fajul Choudhury, as the keynote speaker of this session, uh, we have had him uh, in this session and we are really grateful to uh, him because he has great contribution in research and uh, literature. In a word, he has many uh, faculties in one man. Uh, he I, actually, I mentioned only a few words uh, to introduce him, but he is more than these introductory words. He is now, uh, now uh, teaching in a university uh, and we are really uh, happy to have him in our session. And you know, uh, already our chairperson of this session have mentioned that um, we have uh, four uh, promising uh, museum professionals uh, from uh, Bangladesh National Museum and uh, National Science and Technology Museums of Bangla Museum of Bangladesh. You have already uh, known their names. And now uh, the floor is for uh, Professor Fajul Choudhury uh, as uh, the keynote speaker. Uh, sir, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Siraj Islam, for your kind words of introduction. Uh, can, uh, can I can I share my screen? If you empower me, then I'll sometimes share my screen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today's uh, topic is art and, uh, art and architecture of Bangladesh. Uh, this is very good, but two together become a very wide range to cover. 
Uh, why? Because art and architecture are two creative human faculties, two human artifacts of similar nature and technique with altogether different purposes. Architecture is essentially a functional domain, a practical area which involves building and construction. More specifically, art uh, covers mainly painting and sculpture, uh, the purpose of which is creation of visual beauty. So uh, architecture has essentially functional in nature. We build and construct uh, and uh, there is an architectural dimension. But when we paint, when you draw and paint, actually we create more pure form of art, like poetry. Poetry appeals to our ears and painting appeals to our... So this functional difference is important to remember. Paintings and sculptures are uh, visual and at the same time, uh, we know that from that there is a record of human contribution, human inclination towards painting and, and sculpture of from the prehistory era. For a long time, we've been painting, we have been sketching, we have been drawing. Let me few, say only a few words about architecture. Architecture, first of all, it is not about the design of the building or the edifice or any const construct. It is not the design. It is an addition of beauty to the design of the building. Let us, uh, even 50 years ago, both design and its beautification were in the hands of the civil engineers. But they have changed over the last 50 years. And now the beauty segment, beauty part is left to the architects. And civil engineers do their design um, part. If we go around Dhaka city, we do not discern any homogeneity in the architecture. Architecture of buildings that are of various types. Of course, we can divide between modern architecture and pre-modern architecture. Of course, we can do that. But uh, especially when it comes to modern architecture, we do not see any homogeneity we don't see any single pattern. And uh, when does this modernity start? I would say not before 1950s. Partition of India took place, but this modernity in architecture has no connection with the division of India or emancipation of India from the British colonial rule. But it is very safe. It is uh, safe to say that it is from 90s that East Bengal, once called East Pakistan, now Bangladesh, uh, started having modern architecture uh, and the process continues. What has happened in the recent time, say during the 20th century? Yeah, I've just mentioned that during 20th century, architecture of Bangladesh assumed a modern aspect. That's one thing, but at the same time, what has uh, inevitably occurred is demolition of the old buildings because it is a land hungry country and the preservation of all the buildings is not possible. So while we embraced modernity in architecture, we also, were kind of fate bound to demolish the old architectural, old buildings uh, bearing the traditional architectural style. Preservation of all old, old buildings is important, but it is not easy. What you can do is certainly you can carry out a survey of the old buildings, the buildings from the 18th to 19th century, and make a selection of buildings which have distinctive architectural aspects, and then we can proceed to preserve those old buildings. Because it is a land hungry country, and also we are poor uh, in resources. It is not easy 
to go for preservation of each and every building from the 18th or 19th century. I mentioned of lack of homogeneity in the architectural mm -hmm. pattern, the, but that is more applicable to modern buildings as I also indicated earlier. If you look at the mosques, which are there in abundance throughout the country, except for a few very modern mosques, all the mosques have the similar pattern of tombs and minarets and uh, the, the, the height is uh, way above the normal buildings. So this pattern is common. So there is homogeneity, there was homogeneity, and still when, it, when we build new mosques, given that there's enough space, we follow the traditional architecture of the mosques. I think the same applies to other temples. Excuse me, can, can you share your uh, screen with us? Because we can't see uh, your presentation. I, I am <laughs> kind of reading my notes, but well, let me see. All right, um, I have a few photographs. This is the oldest one I have. Uh, you know, everyone knows it, right? The uh, madrasa of the Buddhist uh, from a from a very long time, Pahar Paharpur, and. Uh, if you double click it, so it will, it will come in a full screen. So you can move uh, the pictures at full screen. Double click, sir. 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 All right. If you double click on the double click on the Paharpur. I am going to double click on the Paharpur. No, I am going to see it. Of course, I am going to see it. No, I am going to see it. I am going to see it. Okay, let me see it. Okay, so Paharpur, Paharpur, this is just, I have put it here just as a matter of symbol of the fact that architecture was always there. The engineers who build the places, they always had uh, something in their mind. Now, this is, you know, the, the, the Shat Gombuch Mosque of Bagirat and uh, the minarets, the uh, tombs, and it is very common. The pattern, this is a spectacular, but the, but the Pattern is the same. This is uh, Borushot Darbari in Panam City, which is which has been renovated recently. This is um, from the early 19th century, I think by now demolished, and this is the the common pattern of the residential buildings of the rich people of the Zamindars. 150 years back, we see a plenty of them still all over the country in different places. Typical mosque is from Karwan Bazaar. And this is Asan Manzil uh, from 19th century. The Islamic architecture is there. Islamic architecture is uh, reflected in two things. One, one the, is these uh, arch and the tomb above. The Parjan Hall, which is a part of the Dhaka University, it also bears the mark of Islamic architecture. And this is, if you, if you can see, this is the modern Dhaka, Dhaka of today. There are high scrapers, old buildings coming up every day. And I, I always say that Dhaka is a High rise shanty, busty, because there is no uh, good planning to the small city. There's another picture, an aerial view of Dhaka with lots of buildings coming up every day. 
lots of high rise, high rise buildings coming up every day. And this one is iconic. Uh, we always say that uh, we have embraced more you know, the architecture and this, the parliament house of uh, East Pakistan, now Bangladesh, uh, is iconic. Uh, this is something marvelous. And this is the Teen Bangladesh Friendship Hall. This is the Bangabundu Novo Theater. This is Bokshundara Shopping Mall. Now, we can say that when it was built in the 1950s and continued to 1960s, uh, uh, this, this and other buildings were really very impressive in nature. This is a product from Louis Kahn, as you all know. I would say that uh, all the new category buildings like Kamlapur railway station, like the architecture building of Buvet, the Chadukala Fine Art Institute, all these are contributions of foreign um, architects, except for Mr. Mazharul Islam, who designed the Chadukal Institute. Even the St. Joseph High School, ESC, and Michael Mukarram also was not designed by us, but a foreign person. So we can say, safely say that the modernity in architecture of Bangladesh started in the 1950s and the pioneers were foreign uh, architects, very competent, very good foreign architects. But the time has changed. Now the domain of Bangladesh architecture is ruled by local architects who are very capable, uh, who have a different set of mind, different set of mind in the sense that they want to create something new, they want to create a novelty, they want to define with the mind of a poet or with the mind of a painter. So who are those foreign uh, architects? One is Thadiani. Uh, Doxiades, Hicks, Louis Kahn, Daniel Dunham, uh, Robert Bugici, Richard Groom, and, and to them we should add the name of Mr. Matthews. The new generation of architects emerged when architecture was offered as a course in the polytechnics and the universities. So we got trained architects uh, from amongst ourselves. And they wanted the, but, but, but the, the most of the buildings were in the public sector. So government architects had a role to play. And uh, the monotony in the architectural landscape is a contribution of government architects who were always designing something stereotypical. Some boxes, two boxes side by side, one box here, big box here, another big box. And it, it is more like German Bohus. Uh, movement who were uh, to whom boxes the, the pattern of boxes was very interesting the german movement still continues uh, but they make a lot of they add a lot of variation to the boxes unfortunately i would say till the turn of the century 1950 to 2000 the government architects uh, caused monotony by 
focusing on the functional aspect of the buildings and did not really focus on um, creating a beautiful facet. But now you see that the days have changed, as I have mentioned, the new generation architects. Even if you look at BNM by Bangladesh National Museum, what you see is it is functionally excellent, but it is quite a big box with a lot of small box inside. So the, the same applies to Delhi National Museum, a big box and there are small boxes inside. So I do not know how it is classified by the uh, architects, the architects, uh, scientists, but to me, it is a box on boxes or box inside, boxes inside box. What happened uh, in the recent time is the participation of uh, the private sector. The private sector accumulated a lot of money in the 90s, 1980s and 1990s. And with money, they not only achieved some purchasing capacity, they also had, some of them had uh, better taste. And when they went for building something, they emphasized on the beauty around the building. It should not anyone look like box. Am I there with you? Can you see me? Yeah, we can see. I have lost my screen. All right, if you can see me, hear me, all right. So, as I mentioned already, the role of civil engineers in designing the building, the, 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 the beauty side of the building, has been replaced by professionally trained architects over the last 40 years. And now it is totally a domain of train architects. When the real estate industry of Bangladesh emerged in the late 1970s and quickly gained momentum, we again saw a replication of box pattern. The nice houses with some variation were all replaced by high rise tall buildings, but again, box upon box as I showed you uh, a few minutes back in one of the pictures. So the landscape is, I, I don't, I understand that the limitation. If you look at Boshundara shopping mall, which came about uh, one and a half decade back, uh, it is, although it is, it, it is still a box in pattern, they have tried to add some round features to the facet, but that is not really noticeable unless you take keen interest. It is still a big box. If you look at Jamuna Future Park again, a significant building, you again see a big box and there are a lot of boxes inside. Maybe there is some engineering uh, difficulty in there. So box is the fundamental approach to high-risk buildings and also by and large to other things, but other buildings of all types. But we have, we have witnessed in the last 20 years that young architects who got trained in 1980s in their uh, mature age, they, have, they are trying to create new things, even though uh, some of them have uh, designed wonder, uh, wonderful buildings, um, wonderful mosques where uh, natural light penetrate and uh, the need for electric bulb is not necessary. What I've tried to say in, in, in last uh, about 10 minutes is that that was a traditional architecture, which was taken over by modern architecture since 1980s, 1950s. And it started with the big buildings 
uh, designed by foreign experts mostly, like the building of parliament, the Kamlapur railway station. And now we have got in, our boys, we have grown into gentlemen. They're um, ruling the domain of architecture and they're trying to create something new. I hope that in future um, we will have nice um, architectural presentation in both public sector and private sector buildings. We already have many, but unfortunately the urban landscape does not really appeal to me. Um, maybe lack of a holistic planning uh, is the reason behind. So that's all, all about uh, architecture from my side. And now very quickly to the art of Bangladesh. Two genres come first to our mind when we speak art in Bangladesh. One is painting and the other is sculpture. There are many other uh, genres, but mainly painting and sculpture. It is easy to talk about 10 or 20 painters. It is not difficult to write an article on the role of the designers in fostering painting in Bangladesh. It is also not difficult to write an essay on how our painters captured our war of liberation of 1971 in their paintings. It is not difficult to write an essay on the uh, role of women painters in Bangladesh, but I have not come across any article where they have uh, tried to write a history of art in this country. One problem is this, that we are now Bangladesh, 50 years back we were East Pakistan, then we were East Bengal, part of India. Um, so that makes the situation slightly complicated, but it's not too difficult. For example, when it comes to the history of painting in Bangladesh, mo mostly we refer to Zainal Abedin as the starting point. And that is, Zainal Abedin deserved this position. But if we consider Bangladesh as East Bengal, we have to look at also at uh, what happened towards the towards the end of 19th century or early 20th century. Even Rabindranath Tagore, who started painting in 1920s, uh, departed from the tradition of Nandulal Bushu, the tradition of Avon Thakur, and he he introduced modernity in Bengal painting. Tagore is not really recognized as a, as, as a major figure in the realm of Indian art, though he painted as many as 2,200 paintings. But it is true that in his paintings, we uh, saw novelty, we saw the imitation of Western style, we saw departure from the tradition. So if I can share again. So before Tagore, I would like to draw attention to one thing that the, the, uh, can you see one illustration? It is cover of a book called Shuchitra Rail Abutar about 100 years back. This is one of the oldest Bangla books, which was, which has a, which has a, which had a colored cover. And there were some illustration inside also. This is, uh, this was an illustration with one study. Uh, I hope you can see this. This is a second illustration. And this is the third illustration. Now, I was uh, talking about Tagore and uh, then I will draw your attention to the commercials 
by commercials, I mean the, can you see the commercials? Commercials are the advertisement uh, they were, I mean, when they, when they started uh, producing tinted books, they had to draw commercials, advertisements. Um, this is one. This is another one. This is Rupert Biscuit. This is Porn Screen. This is... Uh, an advertisement of a Bangla movie, Shankalpo. So I would say that uh, illustrations of the books and drawing advertisement for the magazines and newspapers uh, where the paintings, this approach to painting changed because till then, it was uh, kind of confined to Kalighat Port, et cetera. And I was talking about Tagore. Um, let us have a look at Tagore's painting. Tagore uh, started to paint in this form when he was correcting the manuscript. So he was uh, making corrections and uh, with his pen, red pen, black pen, blue pen, he used to make forms like this. Forms that were not really realistic in nature. It came out of his mind. If you see this, this is a face and uh, Tigor faces like these with weird uh, looks. This is a woman with hair spread out. They're very modern in concept. This is again a creature that came out of Tagore's mind. And uh, that, uh, he created a lot of animal paintings without reflection of a real animal. This is another manuscript page where he made some. This is the studio of Robin of Tugger where he used to paint. You see a lot of, lot of color pops up there. There's a good in white photographs. The final picture here is this one. You see, quickly. Absolutely beautiful, nice, modern painting of some woman sitting and gossiping. So when I speak about art, uh, Bengal art, I always appreciate to go for introducing modernity in, in uh, Bengal painting, though, unfortunately, he is not recognized as a major painter uh, early 20th century. That's a pity. Now, Zainal Abedin was trained in Calcutta. Uh, the Calcutta Art School came up uh, first in the late 18th century and then in 19th, uh, 19th century and then early 20th century in two phases. One was the first one, the late 18th century was industrial art kind of thing, not really a a pure art like painting, sculpture, etc. And Zaila Nabedin, when he came up, he was, he, I mean, I say that there is no really consistent chronological history of painting of Bengal. So if you ask, ask me who preceded Zaila Nabedin, I cannot say. But I know that he, with him, there were many good painters. And also, at the, almost at the same time, Novera Ahmed emerged as a, a notable sculptor and promised a lot, uh, promised a lot. Unfortunately, she did not, she could not work for a long time, but what it, what it did was spectacular. 
something uh, notable. So he honored acquaintance with Anil Abedin, and uh, he's, he's, he was more into, uh, well, since Zainal Abedin in 50s or 40s, 40s to today, it's almost a matter of 80 years now, we have seen evolution of the Bengal painting. And Bengal painting was highly influenced by the Western influence. But over the last 30, 40, 50 years, our painters have absorbed and assimilated the foreign influence, the Western influence in such a way. Uh, I must say that uh, China, Japan have a very rich uh, tradition of painting. We borrowed many from the West. I think Tagore had some paintings after <coughs> Japanese style. He visited Japan a couple of times. <coughs> I've not talked much about this, but I like to say that <coughs> today we have good art schools and colleges and faculty and universities that produce professionally trained painters. But everybody is, <coughs> does not become a Zainal Labidin or a Sun Sultan or Kamrul Hassan or Kayum Chaudhary or Kalidash Kormukar. They are, they are gifted. What has happened that we have, we have seen the emergence of commercial art in 1970s. <coughs> that is a very strong, powerful segment of the painting sector of that. But as to pure painting, we can distinguish two mainstream. One is a realistic painting, where we, we, we like Zainal Abedin or SM Sultan, we paint people, people in action, people in, against nature, nature itself. And the second stream is abstraction from reality, where the painters play with color, and lines, I would say dots, lines, and color. These are the three elements with which the painters play. And today, when I speak in 2022, I can take pride in saying that Bangladesh has a very wide and strong, it is wide in the sense that the number of painters huge, it is in the ratio with the total population is absolutely good. And we are using all sorts of medium, you know, in, in painting medium matters. And also we are looking, uh, we, we, are, our, we have hundreds of painters, young painters, mature painters who have been pursuing painting for creating beauty beauty, unknown beauty, like Sultan has shown. Zainal Abidin show, showed, and then Sultan showed how to create beauty with strokes, with colors, how to, how to make something familiar, a bit, a bit unfamiliar. Unfamiliarization is a technique in art. We know something, we see the cultivators in the field every day, but when Sultan painted the cultivator behind the bullock. We saw the muscles. When Shahabuddin painted the portrait of Bangabund Sheikh Mujib, we saw that in his strokes there was power, dynamism. So uh, this painters have distinguished themselves with their very distinctive style, which are, which is, which are gifted, I would say that this is not, this cannot be acquired. So that's all from me. Um, again, to re reiterate my concluding line in 2022, since independence of Bangladesh 1971, we have got a 
we can be proud of our painters we can be proud proud of our the domain of art uh, mr zabid thank you very much uh, uh, we have initiated these and mr jang hussain sir and all others thank you very much for giving me a chance to share with you my thoughts on the architecture and art of bangladesh thank you very much see you again thank you very much sir for your valuable time and presentation we have got a broad spectrum of art and architecture of bangladesh uh, from the valuable presentation from uh, professor fazilat choudhury architecture from ancient time to modern one and art uh, from uh, tago to uh, recent trends and uh, of our uh, master uh, artists to contemporary ones so uh, thank you for your uh, nice presentation sir now coming uh, our first speaker with her presentation on traditional folk painting of bangladesh uh, ms asma feddosi uh, the floor is yours madam please thank you honorable chairs uh, mr jangir hussain and respectable key duty speaker mr fazlul choudhury and my dear fellow colleague and moderator in the sessions mr edis rajul stamps and uh, are uh, here connected all distinguished guests and icom member of bangladesh and pakistan and other assalamu alaikum and very good evening to you all uh so the title of my uh, research is traditional folk uh, painting of bangladesh and i would like to express my gratefulness to icom and icom uh to give me this opportunity now i welcome to you all my presentation first of all uh, i want to sh uh, shortly sh um, say what is folk painting i know uh, i know all of our honorable audience are uh, know what is the folk painting but i try to express myself in a simple way uh the folk uh painting so the two words the folk means um, uh, the folk means the um, uh, mass uh, and the painting means uh the paint or or uh, drawing so folk painting means the painting of mass people that means uh, the painting of a common people it has a native style and simple techniques and they are used uh, simple materials it is basically a, a form of ordinary like people's expression themselves through painting on objects that convey their lifestyle or uh, their culture i would uh, like to share uh, my content first of all objective of the research uh, that methodology uh, the literature review and gap uh, then discussion on findings in the discussion and findings i like to uh, discuss photochitro shoker hari uh, shara chitro ghar uh, chitro riksha painting track painting board painting cinema banner painting dal chitra or uh, wall painting and alpona or floor paintings and craft based painting and max painting and some challenges and some recommendations then uh, uh, i would like to share my research objective first of all to examine the motive patterns nature uh, origin and social relativity of folk painting in bangladesh and second one is to explore folk painting created purpose and social perspectives and final one is uh, to consider the social economic background and current challenges of folk painting in bangladesh research uh, methodologies uh, here i uh, this is studies adopts a qualitative method and my approach is inductive and my study is case study and here i use primary and secondary data and document analysis of the study includes book articles newspaper 
the official documents and publications on the eve of different events. And here I also interviewed uh, of different folk painters and observation of the folk painters work and thematic data analysis technique applied for analyze data and develop themes. Uh, literature uh, review. And there are few works on folk painting in Bangladesh. Uh, I especially mentioned uh, the writers Wakil Ahmed, Tupail Ahmed, Henry Glassy, Chris Mahmood, and some of scatter um, uh, books on uh, folk painting in Bangladesh. Uh, in, uh, in this uh, existing literature, I think I need more research on this area. And in this existing literature gaps are uh, to motivate me to, uh, to explore this field. I believe uh, that this study is includes some data and information in our existing knowledge and on folk painting of Bangladesh. Our discussion and findings. <clears throat> Uh, in the discussion on findings uh, section, I would like to discuss some traditional uh, folk painting in Bangladesh, like Pata Chitra. Yeah, uh, here I show a, a picture of Pata Chitra. Pata Chitra is the ancient folk art which has a long history of 2,500 years uh, to its development and contribute to our society. Potosita is one of the forms of rural arts. Uh, the word uh, Potosita uh, perhaps is separated into two parts of two sub words, which are Poto and Chitra. The word Poto uh, was derived from the Shanskriti word Potro, uh, which means clothes or dress, and by the sense, uh, by the sense of drama, it means scene. And the word chitra means picture or image. In the English, it, may, it, is, it means scrolling uh, painting. <clears throat> Bodo chitra are uh, um, two, uh, according to uh, size, Bodo chitra are two uh, types, uh, like uh, square Bodo uh, chitra and uh, rolling Bodo chitra. Scarpato uh, Chitro or Joka uh, Joko uh, Porto Chitro is the basis of single impressions uh, of uh, or scene or any uh, image or god or goddess. The type of Porto is big uh, of postcard size. Uh, besides the other uh, types of Porto uh, is known as Jorano or rolling, um, rolling Porto Chitro uh, or Digul Porto Chitro or Latai or uh, uh, that uh, like uh, this uh, Kaligat, uh, Kaligate Porto, Porto Chitro, um, Gaji Porto Chitro or Chokhu Dan Porto Chitro in ethnic minority of Shautal. The type of Porto Chitro is kept in rolling mode and that's why it called a Jorano Porto Chitro. And uh, the particular size is uh, this uh, this type of uh, particular size is 10 to 15, 15 uh, feet. And uh, uh, or at the end of this uh, type of particular have two borders. Uh, uh, it has uh, two sticks it, that uh, will be helpful for our uh, easy rolling and open. In generally, the, this type of photo bears a full story, which is expressed in painting uh, through eight or 20, uh, 22 cases. Then Shokir Hari. Now, Bangladesh is a, uh, a, rain, a river in country. There are more than 200 rivers uh, in Bangladesh. Therefore, a good section of traditional art and craft are related in the rivers. Pottery is the on of the made uh, by the river clay, one of the oldest and widest traditions craft uh, is pottery. The pottery is commonly used uh, as a patils or cooking pot or others. Nonetheless, all, the, all those potteries are plain and unglazed. On the other hand, shakari is very colorful and it is one of the Explosive forms of pottery. 
it is basically a design or painted but it has other names uh, as well such Chittitohari or Shokke Chukai, Pulhari, Sika, Sikahari, uh, etc. Shakir Hari uh, painting uh, poses and motifs. Shakir Hari artists uh, use a traditional exclusive technique for painting and natural elements. They uh, maintain some state, firstly, the uh, the fried uh, tamarind that is uh, very available in our country. And after that, peeling the seed and soaked it and then spoil it uh, to make a natural gum. And secondly, some chalky soil is mixed with the gum and a layer is given on earthen vessel or hurry. This layer is repeated two or three times. And thirdly, another layer is given on the vessel with yellow color. This color is locally known as a puree and then the vessel's background is ready for painting with different color and all color must be mixed with natural gum. Finally, uh, finishing the painting, they uh, give a layer again with the gum. It is also repeated three times. Then the Shokirari's paintings becomes permanent and clear. Traditional uh, artists uh, uh, use make their brush with the fur of goat's neck, it is, uh, it is painted with images of fish, combs, uh, birds, elephant, creepers, fruits, lotus, uh, etc. All the uh, motifs have uh, um, uh, inner meanings and it is basically used for carrying something or putting something. Sharachito. Another artist's uh, popular pottery uh, painting is Shorachitu. This uh, the Shorachitu is one of the ancient painting style in Bangladesh. Uh, Bangla Shora means the lead of a clay pot or picture. However, this is a different. It is not used as a lead. Uh, the shape of this Shora is round and convex without a top handle. It has some um, uh, myth. For example, uh, some people explain that the shape of a shora is referred as a, and some are in belief that it is a symbol of a woman that refers to fertility, productivity, and prosperity. In Shara Chitra, Lakshmi Shara and Durga Shara are very well known of Bangladesh. Hindu uh, goddess Lakshmi is deity of wealth and in agricultural based Bengali society, she is the deity of good luck, wealth, excellence, and beauty of, of home and prosperity. In this uh, pottery world, there is no option as Shara to create a wide and plain platform for painting. The painting in Sharachitu is different from reason to uh, reasons. According to Sharachitu style, it can be divided into two wings. One, uh, one of them is Dhakai style and another is Koitpuri or Gonka style. Lakmi Shara and Durga Shara is alternative or uh, representative of sculpture. Sculpture is because uh, sculpture is very costly, uh, but uh, the uh, this kind of shara is very affordable for general people. Sharachito artist is a uh, artist not only paint religious uh, shara uh, such as Lakshmi like Shara, Durga Shara, Radha Shara, Krishna Shara, but also they paint Pul Shara, Alpana Shara for uh, Muslim or and few make Gaji for Shara. Nowadays, uh, Sharachitu artists are making Shara with different figures and without figures, which becomes popular and decoration piece. Now, uh, uh, I will do another, um, another painting, uh, uh, another pottery another painting that is Ghata uh, paintings. Uh, the uh, word Ghata means water pot, and Ghata uh, painting is a very uh, primeval painting. 
in Hindu mythology, one of the central events of sea charmings when a struggle between deaths and oshurs. Uh, all toxic came out from the auction. auction. Uh, the, um, the, word Vish and the Lord Vishwakarma created a pot or god for putting all toxic. After the god becomes a major essential element for all happy events. In uh, ancient uh, balance, uh, my ancient Gitikar mentioned uh, this uh, card as the name of Bharat. Ghart uh, is, uh, has a several types of based on the painting is that it depicts one is, so, for example, Manusha Ghart, Dar Ghart, Mongol Ghart, Durga Ghart, Lakshmi Ghart, or Saraswati Ghart, Shurja Ghart, or Ganesh Ghart, etc. Ghartachita, a uh, Hindu community needs a uh, Ghart for all worship. This ghata is, uh, uh, is as secret as murti or sculpture. Sometimes it is more important than murti because worship is the happen one state of God. It appears in the uh, literature that God is nothing but a symbol of human body and water which is demonstrator of blood. The artisan uh, painting the, uh, their guard with flowers, keepers, motifs, as well as uh, their uh, draw different line uh, borders on, on neck and main body. In worship Ghata, they must paint Shastika and good symbol. Ghata uh, uh, were used among all Bengali communities. In Hindu religious wedding, Ghata is the most important event it is always decorated with colorful objects such as creepers and flowers, leaves, chastika mm -hmm. and butterflies. Muslim uh, use uh, geographical motifs in Karta, flowers and creepers and, um, uh, and others. Manusha Ghat is very famous and it has a um, different shapes and the name uh, such as Nag Ghat as uh, one of the more uh, snake wood on the top and Astrona card has eight snake wood on the top. I am not uh, going to discuss in details due to, due to uh, time's constraint. Rickshaw painting. As a, a transport painting, a trans transport painting, rickshaw painting is a, one of the leading and living urban pop tradition. It is a unique art form with own style and color. Rickshaw painting was originated in the 1950s as a movie billboard. The form of painting has two different styles, Dhaka style and Kumila style, but renowned folklorist uh, Henry Glassy identifies three characteristics. First, uh, artisan style, style of relief, and style of photographs. Generally, rickshaw paintings uh, paint whatever he wants uh, on the rectangle aluminum sheet and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and behind and it hangs behind the rickshaw. Popular rickshaw paintings are typically includes Taj Mahal's popular uh, movie star, movie scene, El the Cow and Cock, coconut tree, air plant, and rural scenes. It also includes contemporary issues such as the theme of liberation work, freedom fighter, Bangabundu, and other leaders. In the middle of the 70s, the government banned human pictures. At the time, they paint some imaginary figures like fox controlling the traffic, rabbit going to school, school corridor, etc. Some uh, Islamic folk tales characters, you know, characters like Aladdin uh, with magic lamp, palace, uh, princess, mocks, Brorak. Brorak is a uh, white horse with big wings, and Kaaba Sharif also appeared in the rickshaw painting. The rickshaw painting also spent some popular uh, structure like Eiffel Tower, London Bridge, uh, Shoid Minar, Shiti Chaudhu. 
and Jomuna Shetu or Breeze and some emails of calendar and newspaper. Painting uh, methods. In Reksha Painter, firstly, a base coat color on the rectangle sheet, then paint, uh, uh, paint as the artist wishes. Uh, they use bright yellow, red, green, and white, and other color. A social economic condition, they just uh, dust it, uh, but uh, the painting of rickshaw painting cannot earn enough. That's why the artists are demotivated of rickshaw painting. Due to uh, mm -hmm. earning difficulties nowadays, rickshaw painting use rickshaw painting one different products such as plate, glass, bag, trunks, tray, and uh, etc. Now, uh, track painting. Track painting is one of the traditional, uh, uh, one of the traditional transport painting of Bangladesh. This kind, uh, kind of colorful transport is very popular for carrying goods. All track is decorated with less or more paintings. In Bangladesh, Dhaka, Chirang, Joshua, Rashai, and Slate um, reason, uh, reason are very famous for track painting. Track painting includes flowers, bars, keepers, lotus, saw, and rural scenes, movie, star, religious, or divine words, advice, and proverbs. Uh, here I flow upon observe some are major things in, for, in track paintings. First of all, uh, personal and community based ideology. And secondly, uh, political and various elements in the life of nations. And thirdly, religious and, uh, and divine words are simple. I know Pakistan is very famous for track painting. Boat painting. Um, Banash is a renowned for river and uh, our culture is deeply influenced by the rivers. Due to the presence of many rivers, uh, boats remain as one of the main transport from the prehistorical period. We have various boats for different purposes in Bangladesh. Boat racing boats are more colorful. It is a decorated with painting. Two end of boat is Bengali called Bolui, and both sides of it are painted, painted uh, as um, as their wish. There are uh, painted with flowers and keepers, uh, uh, leaves, stars, uh, different animal images, uh, bars, various border designed, and uh, the board panels are also designed colorfully use of religious symbol and so, uh, are also found in board painting. Somebody, uh, sometimes boards are painted with elephant and tiger that is a symbol of furious, strong and energetic racing board. In general, board paintings use white, blue, red, green and yellow colors for their paintings. They do not uh, use based color all the time. Sometimes they use the base color and afterwards they paint as they want. Here I show a uh, racing board that is uh, displaying our national museum. Cinema banner paintings. Uh, Cinema Rainer painting was uh, the uh, was one of the popular painting uh, language in Indian subcontinental. Once upon a time, the, ma the main promotion of a movie had done by the cinema banner painting. New movie was introduced to general people with the banner uh, painting. Between 60s to 19s, a big canvas banners were hung in front of the cinema hall. The banner uh, deal on uh, movies, hero, heroines, villains, comedians, some attractive scenes of the mo movie with pride exertedly. Now, uh, um, one uh, cinema ba banner, um, banner was replaced with another one with the cha uh, chains of movie, but today this painting is almost nowhere. 
Mohamed Shweb is one of the famous cinema banner painters who has interviewed for this uh, study. In the cinema banner paintings industry, a skilled painter is known as a master or ustad. Uh, he has a uh, doing uh, his painting work since 1965 and, and produced many cinema banner paintings. Now he does very few work as somebody wanted. Their chitro or wall painting. Wall painting is one of the indigenous of folk paintings of Bangladesh, which is mostly contributed by female painters. Wall painting is originated from puja, weddings, new year, and other festivals. In those festivals, a uh, house of uh, wives uh, decorated their house with minimum cost. This painting is only um, portrayed on the mud house. In Bangladesh, we have mud house in many districts, but Chapaynongans and Dinaspur are famous for the wall painting. They hereditarily um, hold these uh, traditions for many years. In wall painting, they do it in every wall, sometimes inner and outer walls and kitchen to bathroom. For this painting, female make a color for their own method and own style. They used red soil or clay matis, chalky soil, and turpentine soil, strike crust plums, crust old mango seed, roots, and banana tree juice. The painters uh, Dekhun Bala Bormon does colorful painting with all uh, natural ingredients uh, we, which are collected locally and she also used um, stick and old clothes as a brush. But her daughter, Chaya Bormon, is painting with brush and animal color and some local ingredients. Here I show a Del um, Chitro in Chapaida Vinicius. Alpona or floor painting. Alpona or floor painting is a coding art. It is a spontaneous expression of Bengali women. Women created a very um, variety of liner patterns on the floor according to the traditional knowledge and imaginations. The word Alpona came from the Sanskrit word Alimpana and the, that means to Cluster or to coat with. It is very an any standard. It is assumed that it said or worship stays and yard of house and outside the door. Hindu women draw white alpona and white with homemade white paste. Rice is the main ingredient of the alpona. They also use dry leaves, charcoal, ash, and barn earth, and vermilion for red color, and, term and turmeric paste for yellow color. Sometimes they mix coloring water, depending on occasion. Here I show some uh, alpona. And craft painting. Craft uh, based paintings, uh, another uh, kind of uh, folk painting is painting on crafts such as clay dolls, wooden dolls, and smugs painting. Doll is a historical form of art. It is very difficult to discover its background. We have different kind of clay doll in Bangladesh. Some are painted, or some are unpainted. Artists uh, painted their dolls to give a attractive look uh, when the doll is burnt or sunbaked. Sometimes they give a coat color on dolls. After that, they paint its eyes, leaves, hairs, ornament trays, and other related elements mm -hmm. depending on doll's characteristics. Wooden dolls uh, paintings has taken as a special positions uh, because of its own statistics. The dolls are made from soft uh, wood uh, like uh, tree as kadoms, ambra, satin, hijal, shawra, and shimul. 
The artist uh, sends gifts a uh, desired shades of the soft wood as he wants. After creating the shades, uh, the use low ripple techniques uh, with carving as he needed. Then, uh, they, then we give a base uh, color uh, coat and with a swift brass strokes, the, they draw eyes, nose, mouth, dress, uh, ornaments, and uh, drapings uh, in na native style. And this is a um, wooden dolls, uh, and it is, it is very famous in uh, Shonarga. Max uh, um, painting. Max paintings or Bukhush paintings is another traditional art of Bangladesh. Shubot Pal of Russia is making the traditional Max for years. Mm -hmm. He uh, says that uh, to prepare a Max, firstly, he makes a face mold with clay, and after that, he wrapped it with newspaper and liquid soft clay to create a layer. Then again, uh, he gives a layer with soft cotton cloth and uh, once again gives a liquid soft clay coat. It is dried in sun or sun for a few days. After that, when the, he removes the mold, uh, a light thick max or mukosh is created for painting. Firstly, he uh, uh, applies a single bright color for coatings, and then he uses different color uh, as he uh, wants. Uh, he draw eye slips and uh, nose, eyebrow, hair, hair, or hair band as his own style. Yes. Oh, styles. Challenges uh, here. I, um, uh, I'd like to share some challenges, modern editions. Uh, we know so, uh, this is a uh, for global editions and internet. So, um, our folk art is very much affected, and urban editions. Uh, this urban editions uh, is also um, a trade for our folk uh, art because our folk art is based on the rural, rural based. That's why urban is one of the threat. And so lack of sustainability, all uh, folk art are not, uh, not, are not um, sustainable, are not, uh, they have not longevity. That's why and this is a uh, one of the uh, threat. And lack of marketing, yes, uh, we have not uh, enough uh, market for uh, this folk painting. And lack of skill, because uh, because uh, because of uh, available uh, and because of unavailable the product and uh, for uh, lagging of arms that's why uh, um, artists are not interested to uh, this uh, field and take cooperative I think uh, uh, we need uh, needs uh, to um, of, uh, to take some proper step for our folk painting, safeguarding, and political hegemony. Uh, we is, uh, you see some political hegemony is uh, uh, impact on our folk painting, and uh, uh, and so that is uh, one of the trade of uh, their uh, own style. And generalization. So this is a also uh, I, uh, now we uh, now we de, um, see every uh, painting are uh, same because they follow each other. That's why uh, they become a generalization. And popular pattern uh, also uh, we see uh, which products is sa selling more. They follow the that's pattern. That's why I think the popular pattern is a threat for our folk painting. And the last one is impact of COVID. Uh, we know uh, last uh, uh, two years we are suffering COVID. So our folk painting also, folk uh, painting artists are also impact in this uh, pandemic. Some uh, recommendations. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, government should take a uh, policy for safeguarding folk. Uh, um, Folk art and um, uh, build 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 up public say, awareness uh, through different activities 
um, GovT uh, should take necessary steps for publicity and they should uh, take soft loan for four printers and sanction a government money for one time and create, uh, create marketing facility of uh, folk painting in the country or, and abroad. And Krypton um, uh, is to uh, patronize folk paintings from cultural and other cultural organizations. And sixth one is uh, to create opportunity for folk artists to participate in various uh, fair and exhibition at home and abroad and arrange a, a reward of uh, encourage folk artist i'm sorry and mm -hmm. that's uh, my recommendations and concluding star remarks uh, all materials are are simple and uh, collected from their surrounding uh, environment as uh, that's I see observed that uh, what um, in our spoke paintings and rituals and arts are created on the basis of cultivations and geographical, uh, geographical location created a direct impact on folk painting and religion has great influence on the folk painting and another influential domain is folk art is selling. Uh, although folk art of Bangladesh is also deeply rooted to local beliefs, customs, privacy, well, social norms, politics, and economic context. And here is my interior, 70, and my defense. Thank you all for hearing me. Thank you very much uh, for your nice presentation. Uh, you have given us a vast panorama of traditional folk paintings of Bangladesh. Our sincere thanks uh, goes to you. Uh, now, I humbly request Mr. Shokti Padohaldar to deliver his presentation on Kamrul Hassanir Pushta Chitre Shamat Shachetanata Pekhid Bangladesh Jatiyo Jadugar. English, uh, social awareness in poster painting. Kamrul Hassan, Perspective Bangladesh National Museum. He will deliver his space in Bangla. And next, uh, there are two another speakers remaining. So please, uh, you will finish your uh, presentation in time. I re humbly request you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, please complete by 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay, sir. Uh, I screen share for C. She has her up next to permission than a complicate. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much uh, to give me a chance, uh, respected chair, keynote speakers, uh, moderator, speakers, and all of the participants, those who are joined this uh, platform. Good evening and assalamu alaikum to all of you. I have a question for you, and I will ask you to so, I am Shuru Kurti. Our preparation is from Bangladesh Jatiyo Jadukar. Shongrito Kamrulas and her poster chitre, Rajniti or Shomashote Tonota. I am to Bhumika Bolsi. Potua Kamrulas and has an abisitro shisti jagotir modhe chitro shilpo pochhat boyerongo shodja bhaskar jonirman poster chitro onnotomo. Shilpo Srishti, Shilpo Andolon Shoho, the Sherpoti Ulek Jogo Shangaskiti Kormokando, or Raznuti Andolon Shonge, the Niambi to Jorito Silen Bolit, our Chitro Kormen and Ababe Potifolito Hece, the Sprem Razniti or Shomasha Sutonota. Poster Shumer Taraka Poster Shumer Mul, Bishobus to Silo, Bishobus to Terece, the Shatobot, Razniti or Shamasha Sutonota, Gong Poster, Alon Coroner Pudan, Boshish to Shabero, Ekadurmita, or Shudu, Pratumik Ronger Babuhar. 
এবং নিজস্ব রেখাঙ্কন পদ্ধতি এটি তিনি ব্যবহার করেছেন এবং তিনি মূলত পোস্টার চিত্র আঁকা শুরু করেছেন ছাত্র থাকাকালীন সময়ে যেটি আমরা দেখতে পাই ১৯৪৪ থেকে ৪৫ সালে জয়নুল আবিদিনের সাহচর্যে জনজীবনের সমস্যার উপরে তিনি অসংখ্য পোস্টার আঁকেন এবং সে সময় থেকেই শুরু করে তিনি বিভিন্ন রাজনৈতিক প্রেক্ষাপট সামাজিক আন্দোলন মুক্তিযুদ্ধ সহ নানা আন্দোলনে পোস্টার চিত্র এঁকেছেন এবং তার আঁকা পোস্টার চিত্র সমূহ জনগণকে উদ্বুদ্ধ করতে গুরুত্বপূর্ণ ভূমিকা পালন করেছে আসলে আমি একটু তাহলে স্কিপ করে যাচ্ছি যেহেতু সময় সংক্ষিপ্ততা গবেষণার গুরুত্ব প্রয়োজনীয়তাটা আমি আর পড়লাম না এবং গবেষণা পদ্ধতি আমি যে পদ্ধতিগুলো ব্যবহার করেছি পাঠ বিশ্লেষণ পদ্ধতি পর্যবেক্ষণ পদ্ধতি বর্ণনামূলক পদ্ধতি বিশ্লেষণক পদ্ধতি মূল্যায়ন পদ্ধতি এবং গুণগত পরিমাণগত পদ্ধতি আহ গবেষণায় মূলত আমি যে উৎস সমূহ ব্যবহার করেছি সেটি প্রাথমিক পর্যায়ে এবং সেকেন্ডারি পর্যায়ে থেকে আমি এটি আর ডিটেলস না বললাম পোস্টার আসলে কি পোস্টার যেহেতু আমরা পোস্টার নিয়ে কথা বলবো সেহেতু পোস্টার কি এ সম্বন্ধে আমি দু একটি কথা বলছি মূলত আধুনিক প্রচার মাধ্যমের অন্যতম হাতিয়ার হয়েছে পোস্টার এই পোস্টারে মূলত কিছু বক্তব্য থাকে এবং এবং সুচিত্র থাকে যেটি চিত্রের মাধ্যমে এবং বক্তের বক্তব্য যে লেখাটা থাকে সেটির মাধ্যমে বিষয়বস্তুটাকে মানুষকে সহজে বোঝানোর জন্য ব্যবহার করা হয় এবং পোস্টারের মূলত প্রথম সন্ধান পাওয়া যায় ইতালির পম্পেই নগরে পম্পেই এবং হারকুল হারকুলানিয়াম শহরে প্রত্নতাত্ত্বিক খননে পাওয়া বেশিরভাগ বাণিজ্যিক পোস্টারই বেশিরভাগ বাণিজ্যিক পোস্টার তবে এর মধ্যে প্রায় ষোলো ষোলো শত নির্বাচনী পোস্টার পাওয়া গেছে এবং পোস্টারের জনক হিসাবে এমিলিয়াস সেলাসের নাম উল্লেখযোগ্য পোস্টার সৃষ্টির ইতিহাসের দিকে যদি আমরা নজর দেই তাহলে দেখা যায় মূলত এটি সামাজিক কর্মকাণ্ডের প্রয়োজনেই এই মাধ্যমটির আবিষ্কার এবং বাংলায় পোস্টারের আদি উৎস সন্ধান করলে দেখতে পাই সম্রাট অশোকের রাজাজ্ঞা কিংবা অনুশাসনমূলক বিভিন্ন শিলালিপি শিলালিপির কথা এখানে বলা যেতে পারে তবে আধুনিককালে পোস্টার বলতে আমরা যা বুঝি তা একটু ভিন্ন ধরনের সভ্যতা বিকাশের সাথে সাথে মানুষের রাজনৈতিক অর্থনৈতিক মুক্তির জন্য শিল্প সংস্কৃতি ব্যবসা বাণিজ্য পর্যটন প্রভৃতি সম্পর্কে জনগণকে অবহিত করার জন্যই মূলত পোস্টার মাধ্যমটি মানুষ বেছে নিয়েছে এবং পোস্টারের সূচনা আর আধুনিক পোস্টারের সূচনা বিন্দু আঠারো শতকের শেষর্ধে ইস্ট ইন্ডিয়া কোম্পানি ক্ষমতা দখলের পর থেকে এই দেশে আসার সস্তা যে বিলিতি প্রিন্ট গুলো সেটাকে ধরা হয়ে থাকে এবং পরবর্তীতে উনিশ শতকে মুদ্রণ শিল্পের প্রচলনের পর বর্তলার যে সাফাই ছবিগুলো এগুলো মোটামুটি পোস্টারের আওতাভুক্ত ব্রিটিশ ভারতের স্বাধিকার আন্দোলনের সময় থেকেই বাংলায় আধুনিক পোস্টারের সূত্রপাত বিশেষ করে বিশ্বযুদ্ধ চলাকালে সাম্রাজ্যবাদী ব্রিটিশ শাসকদের বিরুদ্ধে ভারতের মুক্তিকামী জনগণ পোস্টারের মাধ্যমে ব্রিটিশদের শোষণ ও অত্যাচার প্রতিবাদ করেছে সে সময় যুদ্ধ নয় শান্তি চাই এই বক্তব্যের সপক্ষে অনেক পোস্টার প্রকাশিত হয়েছে উনিশশো সালে রাশিয়ায় নতুন এক ধরনের পোস্টার আবিষ্কৃত হয়েছে যেটি মিখাইল সেরেসনিক এর স্রষ্টা উনিশশো সালে স্পেনের গৃহযুদ্ধ ঘিরেও গড়ে উঠেছিল নানা পোস্টার তবে তিরিশের দশকের সমস্ত পোস্টারের ঐতিহ্যকে ম্লান করে দিয়েছিল পিকাসঙ্গিত মিউরাল প্রতিবাদের ভাষা হিসাবে দেখা যাচ্ছে ভাষা আন্দোলন গণ আন্দোলন স্বাধীনতা আন্দোলনের জন্য পোস্টার গুরুত্বপূর্ণ ভূমিকা পালন করেছে চল্লিশের দশক থেকে শুরু করে আশির দশকের চিত্রশিল্পীদের এখানকার পোস্টারের পুরোধা বলে মানতে হয় এবং বাউন্ন এর ভাষা আন্দোলন উনসত্তর এর গণ আন্দোলন একাত্তর এর স্বাধীনতা আন্দোলন এবং নব্বই এর স্বৈরাচার বিরোধী আন্দোলনকে কেন্দ্র করে শিল্পী দেখা পোস্টার সমূহ ইতিহাসের দলিল হয়ে আছে পোস্টার চিত্রের যে মূল উপাদানগুলি সেগুলির মধ্যে আছে পোস্টার চিত্রে কিছু ছবি থাকে ছবির সাথে লেখনী এবং লেখনীর মাধ্যমে বিষয়বস্তু উপস্থাপন ছবি দেখে যাতে মানুষ বিষয়বস্তু বুঝতে পারে আর সেই বিষয়বস্তু সকলের নিকট বোধগম্য করে তোলার জন্যই ব্যবহৃত হয় ক্যালিগ্রাফি বা টাইপোগ্রাফি সাধারণভাবে ক্যালিগ্রাফি বলতে আমরা সুন্দর হাতের লেখা বুঝি কিন্তু নন্দলাল বসুর কথায় ক্যালিগ্রাফির বাংলা প্রতিশব্দ হল লেখাঙ্কন লেখনীকে অঙ্কন পদ্ধতিতে নান্দনিকতা প্রদান করাই ক্যালিগ্রাফি চিত্রের মধ্যে নান্দনিক লেখনী ব্যবহার করে জনগণকে আকৃষ্ট করা এবং বিষয়বস্তু অনুধাবনে সহজ করে তোলার জন্যই পোস্টারের এ সকল উপাদানের ব্যবহার যেহেতু আমরা কামরুল হাসানের পোস্টারে রাজনীতি সচেতনতার বিষয়টি নিয়ে কথা বলছি সেহেতু কামরুল হাসান যে তার ব্যক্তি জীবনে যে রাজনীতির সাথে জড়িত ছিল বা তার ব্যক্তিসত্তার মধ্যে যে রাজনীতিক বিষয়টি ছিল সেটি একটু উল্লেখযোগ্য যেমন 
বিশ শতকের চল্লিশের দশকের ছাত্র অবস্থায় তিনি রাজনৈতিক কর্মকাণ্ডের সক্রিয় অবস্থান তার ফরওয়ার্ড ব্লকের সঙ্গে সংযুক্তি ফেসিবাদ বিরোধী লেখক ও শিল্পী সংঘ এবং গণনাট্য আন্দোলনের কর্মকাণ্ডে যুক্ত তাতার সর্বভারতীয় ছাত্র ফেডারেশনের পুস্তিকা সম্পাদনা প্রভৃতি সূত্রে তার মধ্যে আর যে রাজনৈতিক সচেতনতা গড়ে উঠেছিল এবং সেটি তার আমৃত্যু পর্যন্ত তার ভিতরে অক্ষুণ্ণ ছিল এর ফলেই পঞ্চাশ দশক ও ষাটের দশকে বাঙালি জাতীয়তার পক্ষে যেসব রাজনৈতিক ও সাংস্কৃতিক আন্দোলন সংগঠিত হয়েছে সেসবের সঙ্গে তার অত্যন্ত ঘনিষ্ঠ সম্পর্ক ছিল উনিশশো একান্ন এ চট্টগ্রাম সাংস্কৃতিক সম্মেলন বাউন্ন এ ভাষা আন্দোলন ও কুমিল্লা সাংস্কৃতিক সম্মেলন চুয়ান্ন সালে ঢাকা সাংস্কৃতিক সম্মেলন সাতান্ন এ কাকমারি সম্মেলন প্রভৃতিতে তার সক্রিয় অংশগ্রহণ ছিল এবং তিনি বাঙালির স্বাধিকার আন্দোলনে সক্রিয় ছিলেন উনিশশো আটষট্টি সাল থেকে উনিশশো উনসত্তরে বিক্ষুব্ধ শিল্পী সমাজের ব্যানারে গণজাগরণে যোগদান এবং বাংলা একাডেমিতে অক্ষর বৃক্ষের উদ্বোধন এবং সর্বশেষ উনিশশো উনসত্তর থেকে সত্তর সালে বাঙালির জাতীয়তাবাদী চেতনা সম্বলিত বহু পোস্টার আঁকেন তার শিল্পকর্ম লেখনীয় বক্তব্য সবসময় স্বাধীনতার শত্রুদের বিরুদ্ধে ছিল উনিশশো একাত্তরের অসহযোগ আন্দোলনে তার সঙ্গে যুক্ত তিনি আন্দোলনের সঙ্গে তিনি যুক্ত হয়ে হাতির ফুল এলাকায় প্রতিরোধ কমিটির চেয়ারম্যান নির্বাচিত হন ইয়াহিয়ার দানব মূর্তি সম্বলিত স্কেচ দশটি পোস্টার তিনি কেন্দ্রীয় শহীদ মিনারে সেটে দেন তেইশে মার্চ এবং পঁচিশে মার্চ গভীর রাত পর্যন্ত হ্যালো আমার কি শোনা যাচ্ছে যাচ্ছে পঁচিশে মার্চ গভীর রাত পর্যন্ত তার নেতৃত্বে স্থানীয় কর্মীদের ট্রেন ছোড়ার কাজে তিনি হাতিরপুর এলাকায় ছিলেন কামরুল হাসানের যে পোস্টার গুলো সেটি মূলত তিনি পোস্টার আঁকা শুরু করেন উনিশশো সাতচল্লিশে দেশভাগের পরপর ঢাকায় বর্ধমান হচ্ছে আয়োজিত পোস্টার প্রদর্শনী থেকে দেখা যায় যার মূল বিষয়বস্তু ছিল মোহাম্মদ বিন কাশিমের সিন্ধু জয় থেকে শুরু করে পাকিস্তান সৃষ্টি পর্যন্ত ঘটনাবলী ধারাবাহিক ইতিহাস এই এসব প্রস্তাব মূলত ড্রয়িং করেন শিল্পাচার্য জয়নুল আবিদিন এবং কামরুল হাসান এগুলো রং করার কাজ করেন পরবর্তীতে ঢাকা আর্ট ইনস্টিটিউট প্রতিষ্ঠার পরে জয়নুল আবিদিন নেতৃত্বে প্রতিষ্ঠিত ঢাকা আর্ট গ্রুপের উনিশশো সালের প্রথম প্রদর্শনীতে বিহজাদের একটি ড্রয়িং সাদা কালো অনুলিপি ব্যবহার করেছিলেন এটি মূলত কামরুল হাসান এঁকেছিলেন রাজনীতি ও সমাজ সচেতনতা ব্যক্তি জীবনে রাজনৈতিক সচেতন থাকার ফলেই কামরুল হাসানের আঁকা পোস্টারে রাজনীতি ও সমাজ সচেতনতার বিষয়টি স্পষ্ট তার আঁকা পোস্টার চিত্র বিভিন্ন প্রতিষ্ঠান ও ব্যক্তিগত সংগ্রহে রয়েছে এর মধ্যে বাংলাদেশ জাতীয় জাদুঘরে শিল্পী কামরুল হাসানের আঠারোশো পঁয়তাল্লিশটি চিত্রকর্মের মধ্যে একশো সত্তরটি পোস্টার রয়েছে এই একশো সত্তরটির মধ্যে নব্বইটি পোস্টারে তিনি ছবি এবং লেখনি দুইটাই ব্যবহার করেছেন অবশিষ্ট যে সাতাশিটি আছে সেটি কেবলমাত্র তার খসড়া পোস্টার অনেকগুলোতে শুধু ছবি অনেকগুলোতে শুধু লেখা রয়েছে তার পোস্টার সময় এই বাংলাদেশ জাতীয় জাদুঘরে সংগৃহীত যে পোস্টার গুলি এগুলো যদি আমি একটু বিশ্লেষণ করি সেটাকে দেখা যাবে কিছু কিছু পোস্টারের যে বক্তব্য সেটাতে একেবারেই রাজনৈতিক সাব যেটা স্পষ্ট যেমন পোস্টারের শিরোনামগুলোতে রয়েছে পিন্ডি গেলে পিন্ডি দেব সমস্ত জাতীয় সিদ্ধান্ত ঢাকায় বসে নিতে হবে নির্বাচিত প্রতিনিধিরা মনে রাখবেন কোনো রকম জটিলতা সৃষ্টি করবেন না এই বক্তব্যগুলো মোটামুটি পোস্টার চিত্র উপস্থাপন করা কেবল একজন রাজনীতি সচেতন শিল্পীর দ্বারাই সম্ভব এবং তিনি যে রাজনীতির সঙ্গে সংযুক্ত ছিলেন বলেই তার পোস্টার চিত্রে এই সমস্ত যে ভাষাটা রাজনৈতিক ভাষা এটি চলে আসে এবং সমাজ সচেতনতা তার পোস্টারের যে এই বিশ্লেষণে আমরা দেখি তিনি কিছু পোস্টারে যেমন লিখেছেন ক্যাপশন দিয়েছেন বিদেশি রুচি ত্যাগ করুন আপনার এলাকায় কোন অপরিচিত লোককে ঘোরাফেরা করতে দেখলে পরিচয় জিজ্ঞাসা করুন বিপদ সংকেত মেনে চলুন গুজব ছড়াবেন না গুজবে কান দিবেন না দেওয়ালেরও কান আছে পরিচয় জেনে নিন প্রতিরক্ষা তহবিলে দান করুন এই যে যে তার হেডিং গুলো এটি তার যে তিনি যে সমাজের প্রতি সচেতন এবং সমাজের জনগণকে সচেতন করছেন তার এই পোস্টার গুলো থেকে আমরা তার বক্তব্য থেকেই সুস্পষ্ট ভাবে প্রতীয়মান হয় সকলের কাছে এবারে আসি তিনি যে জনগণকে উদ্বুদ্ধ করেছেন পোস্টারের মাধ্যমে তার এই যে পোস্টার গুলোর ভাষা আমি জাস্ট হেডিং টাই দেখাচ্ছি পোস্টার গুলো পরে দেখাচ্ছি যেমন তিনি লিখেছেন প্রতিটি কৃষকই আসলিক এগুলো পড়ো না এগুলো শুধু এই যে পোস্টারের জন্য সদস্যদের এটা পড়ো বাস ছবি দেখাও ভালো হবে 
ওকে স্যার আমরা এখানে যে ছবিটা দেখছি দানবের প্রতিকৃতি শিরোনামে কামরুল হাসানের এটি উনি পোস্টারের জন্যই খসড়া করেছিলেন এটি আমরা দেখতে পাই ১৯৭০ সালের দিকে জাতীয় জাদুঘরে কোন একটি প্রোগ্রামে ইয়াহিয়া খান এসেছিলেন এবং কামরুল হাসান ওনাকে লিফটের কাছে দেখেছিলেন তো প্রথম দিনেই উনি দেখে তাকে ডেভিলের মতো মনে হয়েছে এবং এই জানোয়ারটি যে আঘাত করতে পারে তিনি এইটা চিন্তা করেই এই রকম বেশ কয়েকটি স্কেচ আঁকেন সেটির একটি বাংলাদেশ জাতীয় জাদুঘরে আছে এই স্কেচটির এই পরবর্তীতে তিনি কালার করেছেন এবং যেটি ফাইনাল পোস্টারে পরিণত হয়েছে সেটি আমরা দেখি এই জানোয়ারদের হত্যা করতে হবে এই জানোয়ারদের হত্যা করতে হবে এই পোস্টারের যে প্রাথমিক স্কেচ সেটি ছিল আমাদের পূর্বের স্লাইডটি তো এবং তিনি যে এই জানোয়ারকে এই কামরুল হাসানের পোস্টারটি এই জানোয়ারকে হত্যা করতে হবে তিনি এখানে ইয়াহিয়া খানের যে দানব মূর্তিটি এঁকেছেন এবং দানব মূর্তি একে যে ক্যাপশনটি এখানে দেয়া হয়েছে এটি দেখে স্বাধীনতার সময় জনগণ সবচেয়ে বেশি উদ্বুদ্ধ হয়েছে এবং পোস্টারে কামরুল হাসানের আগ্রাসী যে মুখ জানোয়ারদের মুখ এবং রক্ত পিপাসু যে একটি মুখের ছবি এবং তার চোখের যে এক্সপ্রেশন এটা দেখে মানুষের মধ্যে ইয়াহিয়ার প্রতি যে ঘৃণা বিশেষ করে পাকিস্তানি সৈন্যের বিরুদ্ধে যে ঘৃণাটা সামগ্রিক ভাবে এটি জনগণকে সবচেয়ে বেশি উদ্বুদ্ধ করছে তো হাজারো লেখনির চেয়ে বা হাজারো বক্তব্যের চেয়ে কামরুল হাসানের এই একটি পোস্টার চিত্র যেটি অনেক বেশি শক্তিশালী বলে আমি মনে করি এটা বাইল্যাঙ্গুয়াল দুই ভাষাতেই বাংলা ইংরাজি দুটোতেই হ্যাঁ কিন্তু আমাদের জাতীয় জাদুঘরে যেটি আছে সেটি বাংলায় আছে আমি দুটোই আছে জাতীয় জাদুঘরে দুটোই আছে না আপা আমাদের বিভাগেরটা আছে বাংলাতে হ্যাঁ ওকে এরপরে তিনি তার যে আরো রাজনীতি সচেতনতার যে বিষয়টি তার আমরা একদম জীবনের শেষ মুহূর্তের যে স্কেচটি সেটি থেকে দেখতে পাই এটি হলো দেশ আজ বিশ্বব্যায়ার খপ করে এখানে তিনি শৈর শাসকের মুখটিকে ব্যঙ্গ করে এঁকেছেন সাথে শিয়াল মানে তাকে ধূর্তর সাথে তুলনা করা হয়েছে শিয়াল দিয়ে এবং সাপ এঁকেছেন এখানে বিষাক্ত রূপটি কল্পনা করার জন্যই তিনি এই সাপ শিয়াল এগুলি সমন্বয়ে স্কেচটি এঁকেছেন যেটি তার একবারে শেষ জীবনের শেষ জীবনে কি শেষ মুহূর্তের চিত্রটি তো এটিও শৈর শাসকের বিরুদ্ধে জনগণকে উদ্বুদ্ধ হওয়ার জন্য শৈর শাসককে ঘৃণা করার জন্য মানুষকে যথেষ্ট উদ্বুদ্ধ করেছে এই পোস্টারটি তো আমরা যেটি দেখেছি যে তার যে সামাজিক দায়িত্ব বা সমাজ সচেতন এটা আমরা দেখেছি আজকে এই পোস্টারটি যেমন আজকের দিনে মেয়েদের দায়িত্ব অনেক পোস্টারের ক্যাপশন দিয়ে বোঝা যায় তিনি মেয়েদেরকে উদ্বুদ্ধ করেছেন মেয়েদেরকে যুদ্ধকালীন সময়ে তিনি এগিয়ে আসার জন্য অনুপ্রেরণা দিয়েছেন তার এই পোস্টারের মাধ্যমে এরকম ভাবে মেয়েরাও এগিয়ে আসুন আরেকটি পোস্টার এটি আরেকটি পোস্টার যেটি প্রস্তুতি অর্ধেক যুদ্ধ যেমন আমি কোনো কাজ করার আগে যখন প্রস্তুতি নিব সেই প্রস্তুতিটা যদি আমাদের খুব জোরালো হয় দেন আমাদের কাজটাও খুব দ্রুত এবং সাফল্যের সহিত সম্পন্ন হবে তো তিনি এই পোস্টারটির মাধ্যমে জনগণকে উদ্বুদ্ধ করতে চেয়েছেন যে প্রস্তুতিটা যেন আমরা ভালো করে নেই যুদ্ধের জন্য তাহলে আমরা যুদ্ধে জয়লাভ করব তো এরকম এই পোস্টারটি যেমন তিনি কোনো ক্যাপশন দেননি তবুও বোঝা যায় যে মুক্তিযুদ্ধকালীন সময়ে আমাদের মেয়েরা যে সেবিকার দায়িত্ব পালন করেছে তারা সামাজিক দায়বদ্ধতার থেকে মেয়েরাও মুক্তিযোদ্ধাদের চিকিৎসার সুবিধার্থে এগিয়ে এসছেন সেটি তিনি বোঝাতে চেয়েছেন তো এই এটি এর আরেকটি গুরুত্বপূর্ণ পোস্টার যেটি আমরা দেখতে পাই যে শত্রুর মোকাবিলায় আমরা দৃঢ় প্রতিজ্ঞ যেমন আমাদের এখানে মুক্তিযোদ্ধাদের ই করা হয়েছে ফেসটি বিধৃত করা হয়েছে এবং তার ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ডে বিশেষ করে আমরা জানি যে লাল রঙের একটা মিনিং আছে যে লাল উত্তেজনা হলুদ হলো পবিত্র সাদা হলো শুভ তো তিনি মূলত পিছনে লাল হলুদ সবুজের কম্বিনেশন দিয়ে আমাদের মুক্তিযোদ্ধাদের তাদের শক্তি এবং তারা শুভ একটা ইয়ের মধ্যে দিয়ে বিজয় লাভ করবে সেটি বোঝা যাচ্ছে এবং শত্রুদের মোকাবিলায় তারা যে দৃঢ় প্রতিজ্ঞ এটা দিয়ে মোটামুটি মুক্তিযোদ্ধাদের খুবই উদ্বুদ্ধ করেছে এই পোস্টারের মাধ্যমে যেমন তিনি কৃষকদের হাইলাইট করেছেন এভাবে প্রতিটি কৃষকে আজ সৈনিক এই পোস্টারের মাধ্যমে কৃষকদের অনুপ্রেরণা যুগিয়েছেন যখন একজন কৃষক এই পোস্টারটি দেখবেন তখন তিনি নিজের থেকেই তার ভিতরে একটা আলাদা ফিলিং চলে আসবে যে না কৃষকদের অনেক বড় ভাবা হয়েছে এখানে তেমনি ভাবে শ্রমিকদেরও সেই সৈনিক হিসেবে দেখানো হয়েছে মূলত মুক্তিযুদ্ধের সময় আমাদের কৃষক শ্রমিক সবাই সৈনিকের ভূমিকা পালন করেছে আরেকটি পোস্টার যেমন এটির হুঁশিয়ার শত্রুর শত্রুর শত্রী সেনা যে কোনো সময় নামতে পারে ওদের ধ্বংস করা সকলের কর্তব্য এটি দিয়ে সকল জনগণকে সত্রী সেনাদের বিরুদ্ধে সাবধান থাকার জন্য তিনি উদ্বুদ্ধ করেছেন 
এটি যেমন পিন্ডি গেলে পিন্ডি দেব সমস্ত জাতির সিদ্ধান্ত ঢাকায় বসে নিতে হবে এটি তার একটি রাজনৈতিক চিন্তার ফসল মূল শক্তি মনোবল যেটি আমরা সকলেই জানি যে আমাদের মনোবল যদি থাকে দেন আমাদেরকে কেউ দাবিয়ে রাখতে পারবে না তো সেই হিসাবে উনি এই পোস্টারের মাধ্যমে যে বাঙালির যে মূল শক্তি যে মনোবল কারণ বাঙালি পাকিস্তানি সৈন্যর বিরুদ্ধে মনোবলের মাধ্যমে কিন্তু যুদ্ধ করে জয় হয়েছে তাদের তো এরকম কোন সেরকম ভারী অস্ত্র বা যুদ্ধাস্ত্র তেমন ছিল না তাদের একমাত্র অস্ত্র ছিল মনোবল এটি সমাজ সচেতনতার একটি পোস্টার যে বিদেশি রুচি ত্যাগ করুন বিশেষ করে স্বদেশ প্রেম যে আমাদের দেশি যেটি আছে সেটি আমরা ব্যবহার করব এবং বিদেশি রুচিটাকে ত্যাগ করব এটি সেই পোস্টার যেটি আমি বলেছিলাম মজুদদার রাই দেশের শত্রু আমরা জানি যে যখন দেশে কোনো ক্রাইসিস তৈরি হয় খাদ্যের ক্রাইসিস বা যে কোনো পণ্যের ক্রাইসিস মজুদদাররা যখন মজুদ করে রাখে তখন জনগণের জন্য এটি খুব কষ্টকর হয়ে যায় দাম বেড়ে যায় এর জন্য মজুদদারকে তিনি ঘৃণা জানিয়েছেন যে মজুদদাররা দেশের শত্রু এই পোস্টারের মাধ্যমে যেটি আমরা দেখি পোস্টার চিত্রের মাধ্যমে মজুদদারের পেটটা খুব মোটা করে করা হয়েছে বস্তা পরে বসে আছে এটি শিল্পীর কল্পনা দিয়ে মোটামুটি তৈরি করা তো এখানে আরেকটি পোস্টার যেটা আমাদের বীর সন্তানরা শত্রুর মোকাবিলায় দৃঢ় প্রতিজ্ঞ প্রতিজ্ঞ এখানে আমাদের বাঙালি সন্তানদের বীর হিসাবে চিহ্নিত করা হয়েছে তিনি আগেই তাদেরকে বীর হিসাবে চিহ্নিত করেছেন এবং এই পোস্টার গুলো দেখে যাতে আমাদের সন্তানরা উদ্বুদ্ধ হয় তার জন্যই তিনি পোস্টার গুলি মুদ্রণ এঁকেছেন এবং আরেকটি পোস্টার যেটা আমাদের জয় সুনিশ্চিত এখানে দেখা যায় যে আপামর জনতার আমরা কোন জয়ের যখন স্লোগান দেই তখন হাত মুষ্টিবদ্ধ অবস্থায় থাকে একসাথে অনেকগুলো অনেক লোক থাকে আমরা জড়ো হই উনি সেই পরিবেশটাকে খুব অল্প লাইনে জয়ের যে বিষয়টা সেটা আনন্দটা সেটা তুলে ধরেছেন পোস্টারের মাধ্যমে তো আমি আমার ছবিগুলো মোটামুটি শেষ আমি একটু বলছি যে কামরুল হাসানের পোস্টার চিত্র সমূহ সবসময় প্রতিবাদী ইতিহাসের কঠিন কিছু সময় তিনি তার তুলিতে প্রতিবাদ রূপটি তুলে ধরেছেন পাকিস্তানের জঙ্গি শাসক ইয়ে আর মুখাকৃতি সমৃদ্ধ জানোয়ারদের হত্যা করতে হবে সেসব স্কেচটি অমর হয়ে আছে তার সাহসী প্রতিবাদ এবং ধিক্কারের চূড়ান্ত প্রকাশের জন্য এটি ছিল কামরুল হাসানের একটি স্বয়ং সম্পূর্ণ চিন্তার ধারক ব্যঙ্গচিত্র যা কামরুলের ত্রিমাত্রিকতা স্পর্শী স্কেচ চিত্রের সমগোত্রীয় পাবলো পিকাসোর গোয়েনিকা যেমন সাম্রাজ্যবাদী চক্রান্তের বিরুদ্ধে প্রথম বিশ্বযুদ্ধের বিভীষিকাময় নিষ্ঠুরতম চক্রান্তের প্রচণ্ডতম প্রতিবাদ হিসেবে চিহ্নিত তেমনি উনিশশো একাত্তরে কামরুল হাসানের এই পোস্টারটি মুক্তিযুদ্ধরত জাতিকে ঘাতকের বিভৎস চেহারা সম্পর্কে মানুষের মধ্যে এতটাই ঘৃণায় সঞ্চারের সহায়তা করেছিল যে এদেশের মানুষ আজও ঘৃণায় কুস্তে উঠে পরিশেষে পোস্টার চিত্রে শিল্পীর ভাবনার সাথে সমসাময়িক ঘটনাবলী উপস্থাপনের ফলে মানুষের সচেতন ভাবে বিষয়টি উপলব্ধি করতে পারে শিল্পীকে পোস্টার তৈরি পূর্ব পর্যন্ত ভাবতে হয় বুঝতে হয় কিভাবে ডিজাইন করলে মানুষের কল্পনার ভাব জাগৃত হবে কামরুল হাসানের পোস্টার চিত্রে স্বদেশ চেতনা নীতি সচেতনতা দেশ প্রেম মানবিক মূল্যবোধ প্রভৃতি মানুষের মনে দৃঢ়ভাবে রেখাপাত করেছে তিনি পোস্টার চিত্রে নারীকেও প্রতিবাদী সমাজসেবী হিসাবে উপস্থাপন করে সমস্ত নারী জাতিকে উদ্বুদ্ধ করেছেন দেশ স্বাধীন করার জন্য এগিয়ে আসবার জন্য মুক্তিযুদ্ধকালীন দেশের স্বাধীনতার জন্য নারীদের উদ্বুদ্ধকরণের বিষয় থাকা বিভিন্ন পোস্টার বক্তব্য ও বিষয়বস্তুতে প্রমাণ পাওয়া যায় সর্বোপরি বলা যায় কটুয়া কামরুল হাসানের পোস্টার চিত্র শিল্পীর রাজনীতি সমাজ সচেতনতা ও দেশাত্মবোধের পরিচয় প্রতিমান ধন্যবাদ সকলকে এতক্ষণ আমাকে শোনার জন্য এবং ধন্যবাদ জাহাঙ্গীর স্যার আপনাকে আমাকে সুযোগটি করে দেওয়ার জন্য থ্যাংক ইউ I extend sincere thanks to you Mr. Shokti Padu Haldar for your insightful presentation uh, on master artist Kamrul Hassan's poster painting analyzing uh, political movement and social awareness among the people now of uh, our next speaker Mr. Somitra Kumar Bishash he is a uh, senior artist uh, come uh, audio visual uh, officer of Science, uh, National Science and Technology Museum uh, of Bangladesh. Uh, he is going to speak on contemporary art in Bangladesh, perspective, new media art. Please, uh, Mr. Shamitra Kumar Bishash, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for giving me the chance for this session. And today, today I'm presenting my presentation, subject contemporary art in Bangladesh. 
new please, media of uh, mr somitra please uh, as the time is constrained so please complete uh, by 10 minutes please. okay sir just uh, i'm sure just uh, two or three minutes uh, maybe i think just uh, i'm just uh, continue sir sir first of all what is contemporary art contemporary art is the art of today conducted in the second half of the 20th century or in the 21st century contemporary artists work in a globally influenced culturally diverse and technologically advancing world their art is a dynamic combination of material methods concepts and subjects that continue the challenging of boundaries that was already well underway in the 20th century diverse and eclectic contemporary art as a whole of whole is distinguished by the very lack of uniform organizing principle ideology or ism contemporary art is part of a cultural dialogue that concern larger contextual frameworks such as personal and cultural identity family community and nationality and what is media art new media art refers to all forms of contemporary art made alternate or transmitted using new forms of media technology this includes digital art interactive art interactive and visual art as well as works of art made using robotics video games biotechnology 3d printing and computer animation new media is a category that defies static categorization as the form continues to expand and new media technologies are invented and explored by artists in this contents i just uh, three of artists in bangladesh they practices in contemporary art now this time and uh, just uh, when i just started this contemporary art uh, explanation and a we we in uh, chinese contemporary artist he says this so called contemporary art is not a form but but a philosophy of society in bangladesh uh, contemporary artist uh, first of all uh, today uh, uh, artist name tayaba begum lipi when uh, in this uh, session just uh, one month ago and in this session just communicate uh, three artist to how to work they they are practicing in bangladesh i'm just introduce tayaba begum lipi was born in uh, 1969 in gaibanda bangladesh she completed an mfa in drawing and painting at the institute of fine arts university of dhaka bangladesh and she co-found brit art trust bangladesh first artist run alternative art platform dedicated to organizing exhibition enable international dialogue and exchange and providing support to the country's artists through residencies workshop and funding lipis practice engages painting pin making installation and video to comment on themes including the politics of gender and female identity i will begin Tavagam Lipi says most of most of works are related to very personal issues of human life. He says I always think to play with the contradiction as I think our life is full of absurdity. Tavagam uh, works uh, love bed love beds uh, in 2012 in which the share a space of domesticity, affection and bliss glint with both thread and invention. invitation the blade here represent not merely the violence impelled by its sharp edges but also the object's function as a basic tool to aid in childbirth in the absence of other medical support a circumstance that the artist recalls from childhood painted on the blades is the bengali name balaka a well known bangladeshi brand coming from the lords family the artist associates the strength of steel with the in a city of the women who surrounded her as she grew up individuals who define the oaths to keep their families and communities together yet these works resist interpretation according to simply binary opposition along historical religious social or general lines as mass as the seconds or razors drop across the bed frame one against our approach they also paid artistically join their into a productive space for connection and dialogue and another work my daughter code 2 is a 
Yarning as it is singular, a baby's type construction almost entirely of razor blades. He says, I am the 11th or 12th children expanding the pieces. I was born in the northern part of Bangladesh in a very small town called Gaibandha, Bangladesh. I was uh, my nephew and uh, nieces grow up next to me. Those day, women gave birth at home with the help of village women. The only tool to support the delivery was a new sharp razor blade that had to be boiled on a stove before the baby was born. It is another work, uh, the stolen dream, and another work uh, from 1.7 million miles and 55,598. Waller, uh, she presenting a uh, blades reforming uh, when the structure, uh, this uh, kind of sculpture. And another painting, and uh, uh, once in a blue moon, she, uh, she always depends in contemporary uh, time. And another artist, uh, Mahabub Rahman. Uh, Mahabub Rahman is a, uh, one of the leading contemporary multidisciplinary artists in Bangladesh, working with a range of mediums such as painting, photography, sculpture, as well as performance. His works have consistently questioned his post was identity and the fabric of social structure in Bangladesh, which accordingly to Rahman has been stagnant in its growth for many years by imposing his own portraiture in his works. He brushed the boundary between his own struggles and the country incapability to move forward. Rahman's artworks are audibly screaming and confrontational. His spontaneous performance in public place being a testimony to his frustration. His choice of material zens from cow hides to stainless steel scissors, findings as he says, beauty is ugly things that represent death or pain or separation, which directly relate to the themes of partition, separation and religious orthodoxy. Roman is one of the most important cultural activities of Bangladesh. Since his masters of in fine art from the University of Dhaka, he has chosen mediums like performance and installation that have allowed him to re respond spontaneously, often commenting upon the issues that have plagued post independent Bangladesh. Roman is one of the founder trustee of Brit Art Trust and the first ever non profit artist run platform in Bangladesh. And next one. Uh, uh, his artworks, Roman uh, always represent, represent contrast in Christ border upon his physical form using surgical stainless steel scissors to form envelopes around the body, uh, situating blood flows directly upon the body. As, as Solanki writes on in her essays, uh, Roman's works depict this pressure created by man made system of divisions that place the natural flow to human relationships communications and understanding. For Roman, these pressures and their constructs are as much about protection as they are about man-made contents and defense. Then another work, transfer, transformation. A half man, half ball riding a block and- He is not audible, perhaps he is disconnected. So, uh, message of contemporary art. Contemporary art is the term used for art of the present day. Usually, the artists are alive and is still making work. Contemporary art is often about ideas and concerns rather than slowly the artist aesthetics. Artists try different ways of experimenting with ideas and materials. And in conclusion, in the end, it is clear that contemporary art practice allow artists to go beyond creating only beautiful objects. Instead, they're able to express their opinion on many social causes and even fight against political regime. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for listening my presentation. I, I express 
Hearty thanks to Mr. Shomitra Kumar Vishash. Uh, academically art, artist uh, for your presentation. Uh, we are really thankful to you. Uh, you have presented uh, new media art in the world of contemporary art and introducing us with some uh, new media art uh, of artists of Bangladesh and their artworks. Now, our last uh, but not least speaker, Mr. Rashidul Alam Podip, uh, is coming with his presentation on architecture of Bangladesh, saving past for future. Mr. Rashidul Alam Podip uh, is the ICT head uh, in the uh, ICT section of Bangladesh National Museum. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, sir. Assalamu alaikum. I'd like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to uh, Mr. Chair Jangir Hussain, uh, our Secretary, ICOM Bangladesh, Mr. Shurajir Islam, and all of, all of the people who are joining here today. I won't take uh, uh, much time because uh, it's almost 10 and eight. So I'm going to share my presentation. The title of my presentation is Architectures of Bangladesh, Saving Past for Future. And first of all, I like to acknowledge uh, ICOM and ICOM Bangladesh. Uh, I'm skipping uh, and going uh, very first because it's uh, too late. Uh, as I'm an archaeologist, I emphasize the uh, architecture of Bangladesh as an uh, acad academician or a, you can say uh, an archaeologist. Uh, what can I say about architecture of Bangladesh? Architecture uh, of Bangladesh is really something uh, which is made of brick, wood, or stone, or uh, and it retains a touch of memory, a uh, range of feelings, and a watermark of time. Uh, a unique style of construction has been developed here since the dawn of history. Even today, the architecture of Bangladesh is moving forward with a mixture of modernity and traditions. Aspects of structures and architectures in Bangladesh, uh, you'll find efficiency, some sort of materials, uh, uh, gravity, uh, system, uh, foundation system, uh, simplicity, and so much on time. Uh, I'm uh, going to concentrate on the historical attributes of architecture in Bangladesh. You can find three different periods uh, here. Uh, on uh, early period, we, uh, what is uh, before Bangladesh? Uh, you can say ancient to 1970. You'll find uh, Pala Buddhist architecture, Indo Islamic architecture, Terracotta Temple architecture, and British colonial period architecture. Uh, in 1971 to 1972, uh, when uh, liberation war was conducted in Bangladesh, uh, You'll, uh, you'll find a different scenario here. And in the modern time, you'll find Bangladesh period, which is after 1972. Bangladesh is known as the largest deltic plain, uh, plain in the world. It, uh, the constant change of the land and landscape is further simulated by the change of river path for erosion and integrating levels of silt, flood, and rainwater. The change leads to having diverse microclimatic zones all over the country. Human settlement uh, throughout uh, this landscape is ch uh, challenging as well as inquisitive. Though the traditional mud house can be found all over the country, uh, the building, typology, home state plan, and intelligent use of earth as a building material are distinctive in approach in the northern part of Bangladesh for the specific soil type and climate. 
ideal for uh, earthen house. Although the availability of oven baked bricks, cement, corrugated iron sheet, and uh, easy construction material of these elements gradually transforming the old houses, and they are already transformed. Uh, the comfort, uh, environment, benefit, and the traditional can <laughs> cannot be uh, replaced. So uh, often people just go, got overwhelmed by their uh, neighbors' new brick house and the status gained by it. The thick mud wall control the interior uh, climate, demand hygiene, and have a very low maintenance. So uh, you can find uh, uh, the very first system of uh, uh, what can I say, uh, alluvial uh, uh, soil uh, using a home pattern, which is called a mud house. And when, uh, I, when you will uh, see the chronologically development of architecture here, you'll find the Pala Buddhist architecture uh, at the very first of the Very first of the architectural pattern, uh, you'll find Paharpu, which is a world heritage site. It is situated at Nauga, and it is very one of the most important archaeological sites in, in this country. Uh, as uh, our uh, Honorable Sir Fazilatif Chaudhary uh, already said, that it is a madrasa of a Buddhist uh, community. You can say yeah, it's a, um, one of the oldest university here, uh, one of the uh, premier university of this area. Uh, you, you will, uh, here uh, we found some seals, some uh, terracotta plaques, which de uh, describes it was fully uh, a wonderful pattern, uh, maintains, uh, by uh, Thermopala or Pala dynasty. And some of uh, bu uh, some Buddhist monks were uh, he, uh, came here to uh, learn something from uh, Atish Dipankar, uh, uh, different uh, teachers like Atish Dipankar, Shilavadra, and etc. It contains 177 uh, sails, and uh, on the uh, center, you'll find a Buddhist stupa. Uh, I'll go for uh, Shalvan Bihar. It is at Kumilla, and it's uh, from early uh, Dev dynasty. Here, uh, uh, Vasu Vihara. Uh, it is situated at Bogra, but uh, uh, it is said that uh, Gautam Buddha stayed here for uh, six months, and uh, here Ashoka is uh, erected a large stupa. Uh, Chinese pilgrim claim uh, Buddhist stay here for uh, three, uh, three to six months to uh, purging the religion. After that, you'll find Sultani architecture, uh, which has basically uh, different patterns from two block architecture, or uh, you can say uh, some sort of Sultanate architecture uh, is one kind of impression of two block architecture. Sixty Dome Mosque, which is situated at uh, uh, Bagarhat in Bangladesh. It is also a world heritage site and it is described one of the most impressive Muslim monuments in uh, the whole of South Asia, which has an area of 49 meter into uh, 330 meter, uh, 33 meter and has 81 domes. Uh, uh, after that, you'll find Mughal architecture, which is uh, so, uh, very much influenced by Persian culture. 
uh, domes and ornament ornamental roofs giant entrance uh, mostly um, most of the uh, attributes came from the uh, persian uh, cultures and architectural patterns uh, marbles use of marble started during the reign of emperor jahangir uh, and uh, after that uh, you will find a different muslim architectural pattern we uh, uh, such as uh, barak katra at at haka you'll find lalbak four which has divani arm a water tank tomb of uh, bibi puri lalbak four mosque which uh, uh, all of those are uh, basically one kind of uh, impression of uh persian muslim architectural pattern uh husaini dalan is uh, one of them uh, which is uh, a diff, uh, uh, ex, a different platform for uh, as a rectangular a rectangular building uh for yeah, use used for uh shia muslim community and uh, uh when muslim uh, mughal rules uh here uh they uh, uh this this architectural pattern was uh originated here after that uh i'm going to uh describe the colonial architecture colonial architecture uh from uh, the 17th to the 19th century Uh, english dutch french and many other european uh, merchants started here to, uh, their business in dhaka or bangladesh so uh, when they are here they are uh, tr uh, they try to settle here uh, and they build uh, some architectural uh, attributes here uh, you, you will find panam city which is uh, which was used as a capital in uh, 15th century uh karjan hill is uh, one of the best examples of dhaka architecture which belongs to uh, european and mughal elements uh, it's a, a wonderful blend of european and mughal elements and uh after that when uh, i'm uh saying that the european architecture uh is one of the main attributes uh, from uh, 18th century to now um, we are very much influenced by uh, european and persian culture here uh, in uh, dhaka you'll find armenian church which is a, a significant arch architectural monument uh, you'll find uh, a 750 feet a uh, long church uh in bangladesh you'll find uh banglo architecture also uh, which is uh, very much common in uh, bangladesh and india and in the sar uh, sarsanic uh, architecture which uh, which is uh, some sort of uh, british style uh, architecture with a uh, mughal crafts and many others uh uh asan munjil is one of them where, which is uh, you can find in uh in those uh, saracenic revi uh, revival architecture and uh, its con uh, construction was started in 1859 and completed in 1872 uh it is a, a wonderful uh, example of playing of architectural uh, style of british uh, british and india and uh, especially in public and government buildings in the british raj and the palaces of ruler rulers of the uh, princely states uh, basically uh, they used this type of uh, buildings or architectures uh, Uh, terracotta temple architecture is often found in bangladesh 
find a egg at Bangla, Jor Bangla, Ek Chala, Do Chala, Char Chala, uh, such as uh, this type of terracotta temple architecture here. Uh, Kantaji Temple is uh, one of them, which is uh, situated in uh, Dinachpur Temple. It is three. Uh, it was three stages uh, temple, but uh, with uh, nine towers, uh, for which it was called Navaratna. But it was uh, these Ratnas were demolished by uh, artwork. Uh, here uh, it's a picture of Kantaji Temple uh, in 1870. And this is the current scenery of Kantaji Temple. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, 19, uh, at 1971, when a liberation war was uh, conducted here, people uh, were somehow, uh, most of the people of Bangladesh were um, uh, suffered because uh, they uh, didn't have their own home to stay on, uh, on uh, that situation because uh, cause, uh, uh, liberation war was held here. Uh, in modern Bangladesh, uh, one of the prominent uh, architectural uh, pattern uh, you'll find at National Parliament Building, which uh, uh, architect uh, Louis Icahn was the main master uh, planner of this uh, building. Uh, and last, uh, you'll find Bangladesh National Museum, which is a masterpiece, I can say, uh, because uh, it's a wonderful, uh, it has wonderful uh, patterns of architectural, uh, different types of architectural patterns and uh, attributes. Uh, so it's all for tonight. Uh, thank you all. Thank you for uh, hearing me tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Rashidul Alam uh, for your uh, presentation on architecture of Bangladesh. And you have presented uh, the architectures from ancient times to contemporary Bangladesh. And uh, now uh, uh, we have listened to the illustrious aspects of our art and architecture from our keynote speaker and uh, our promising cultural leaders in the session. Uh, now is the time to uh, hear question and answers from the uh, speakers. So if you have any question regarding art and architecture uh, to the specific uh, speaker, you can ask. The floor is open for question and answer. Excuse me, not only question, but any comments to any speaker or any persons? The floor is open. Okay. I would like to say something. 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 I আমাদের ওই জয়নুল কামরুল হাসান স্যারের যে ইংলিশ যে পোস্টারটা সেই পোস্টারটা ইতিহাস ডিপার্টমেন্টে আছে বোধ হয় জানে না সেটা আর তাছাড়া 1971 সালে যখন আমাদের যখন অস্থায়ী সরকার গঠন করা হয়েছিল তখন गवर्नमेंटের একটা পাব প্রচার ওনা অধিদপ্তর যেটা ছিল তথ্য প্রচার সেখানে কামরুল হাসান স্যার ছিলেন ওখানকার পরিচালক এবং তার নেতৃত্বে 6 জন আর্টিস্ট ওখানে বিভিন্ন পোস্টার এবং বিভিন্ন কাজ করেছেন স্পেশালি প্রাণেশ কুমার মণ্ডল আর ও একজন এই মুহূর্তে নাম মনে নাই তো সেই যে পোস্টার গুলো যে করেছে যে বাংলার হিন্দু বাংলার মুসলিম বাংলার খ্রিস্টান আমরা সবাই বাঙালি মুসলমান তো এই টাইপের এবং আমাদের 16 21 বাই যে পোস্টার গুলো প্রদর্শিত আছে গুলো কিন্তু সেই সময় পাবলিশ এটা এর মধ্যে ইনক্লুড করা যায় কিনা এটা বলার জন্য আমি একটু বললাম আর কি थैंक यू আপা আমি চেষ্টা করব আমি ওগুলোকে একটু দেখে নেই দেখে নিয়ে তারপরে দেখি আমার এটার সাথে অ্যাড করা যায় কিনা ঠিক আছে
Anyone else? Next. Anyone else? Miss Uzma from Pakistan, you can speak something. Yes, uh, you are giving uh, giving us uh, very nice presentations and uh, wonderful presentation and amazing. And again, we meet uh, here uh, after Prague with yeah. Jang Islam and Sumitra Kumar and Shajul Islam. So, uh, and also I can say to uh, Rashid Alam is very good presentation on archaeology and architecture and uh, Smitra Kumar's presentation on contemporary art of in Bangladesh is so amazing. And uh, you guys are amazing presentations and I'm listening, I'm enjoying as well and fruitful uh, uh, presentation of you giving us. Thank you, Asma, thank you for your comment. And uh, anyone else? Uh, uh, now I see our uh, Honorable Sir uh, Mahmoud Akhtar Zabir Sir. Uh, have you any comment? Yes, sir? Yes, I uh, must say uh, that I, I had an excellent uh, presentation uh, here. And uh, congratulations to uh, Chair Jahangir and uh, uh, particularly uh, uh, the speakers, all speakers, for uh, giving us uh, such a uh, knowledgeable information. So, uh, I'm really thankful to them, and I, I I believe, and I see, and I believe that this uh, the time of twenty minutes is not sufficient for the uh, covering of so much uh, uh, historical uh, uh, presentations. So uh, I think we will have uh, programs. So we will make uh, uh, some exclusive lectures. Uh, 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 on each and every topic so that uh, we must know very uh, uh, good presentations from uh, Bangladesh and uh, it's a uh, quite knowledgeable so whatever uh, uh, is given the contemporary art on contemporary art and on architecture and uh, particularly Pradeep has uh, given us the uh, the a total whole scenario of uh, uh, the architecture that that is uh, uh, Rashid, you are you are you have done a very good job but that time was so short that you couldn't explain us the whole things but uh, whatever the pictures and whatever the history you have composed that is very nice and uh, congratulations to Jahangir Saib and uh, I will expect that there will be soon international uh, session too. And uh, we will uh, keep it up uh, together, this, uh, uh, this lamp uh, lit it, you see. So uh, um, thank you very much, uh, uh, Siraj, for uh, conducting the show. And uh, also my greater thanks to uh, the keynote speaker. So he is uh, uh, a living legend, really, and we must uh, uh, have more sessions with him to understand uh, <clears throat> more of the museums and <clears throat> more of the things about uh, uh, <clears throat> Bangladesh. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, sir, for your uh, excellent comment uh, on the speakers. Uh, uh, Ms. Asya Khanum, Madam, uh, have you any comment? Dr. Asya Khanum Likon, Madam. No comment. Uh, Dr. Shapun Kumar, sir. Have you any comment? Uh, thank you. Uh, for the comments uh, on the speakers. Uh, now, I humbly request Mr. Jahangir Hussain, uh, the chair of NBCOM and ICOM Bangladesh, and uh, former chair of ICOM Bangladesh, and uh, member of uh, uh, the working group uh, on statutes and uh, of ICOM. Uh, now, uh, the floor is for the honorable chair. Sir, please, your- uh, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shiraz. 
and uh, my friend from Pakistan, Mr. Thank Dr. Uh, Mohammad Jabed, and uh, all the participant speaker and uh, my senior colleague, uh, Mr. Oh, no, no, no. keynote speaker. I am very grateful to all of you, especially keynote speaker and all the speakers. Uh, for presenting their presentation in the uh, our first session and everybody uh, presented well and i think uh, our uh, presentation this type of presentation will continue this is our national presentation and this uh, i will sure we will uh, very soon we will arrange for international sessions sometime at that time, I, I will invite from other countries also to participate with us. And uh, as the time is over for about 32 minutes, so I will not continue for further. And I am uh, very grateful and thankful to uh, ICOM Pakistan and uh, especially Mr. Again, Mr. Mr. Jabed for giving us this opportunity and for their technical support. And I think uh, we'll continue this type of sessions in future. And by good. this uh, session, we will communicate each other and our culture will be known to other countries also, our history, yeah. our culture, and will be more friendship and more popular and more uh, 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 known to the um, other countries also by these sessions. And I think uh, we'll continue in further. And thank you very much for um, uh, patience hearing. And thank you for participation, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your uh, uh, speech. Uh, and we have had uh, about 16 uh, knowledgeable uh, participants, uh, including our speakers, keynote speakers, chair, and uh, also me. Uh, today, uh, we have initiated a new chapter uh, in, the, uh, in the discussion of uh, culture of Bangladesh uh, uh, with the support of ICOM Pakistan. Uh, we are really uh, grateful to ICOM Pakistan, especially uh, the initiator, uh, the honorable initiator, uh, Mr. Mohammed Akhtar Jabistar. Uh, and uh, we are really happy to have uh, Uzma Bhatti uh, from Pakistan, uh, the promising artist. Uh, and uh, we uh, got uh, four promising cultural leaders uh, from Bangladesh, Mr. Shokti Padahaldar, uh, Mr. Rashidul Alam uh, Mr. Shomitra Kumar Bishash, and Ms. Asma Fedosi, one from uh, National Science uh, and Technology Museum of Bangladesh, and uh, other three from Bangladesh National Museum. Uh, today, uh, with the consent of uh, the Honorable Chair, I am uh, uh, I am going to finish uh, my uh, moderating uh, this session, uh, sir. We can. Thank you. Again, we can close the session and thank you very much for your excellent moderating. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Grateful to you. Have, have a good night. <laughs> Give me the Bye opportunity. Everybody. Everybody. Thank you, sir. Everybody. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.